Good morning. My name is Esther McCallman. And I'm Stephen Robert, her son. The scripture reading is taken from John chapter 1, verse 43 to 51. Okay, the scripture started. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. There he met Peter, who was from Bassada, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Jesus said to Philip, Come with me. Philip then found Nathanael and said, We have found the one that Moses and the prophet wrote about. He is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see these inspired words from the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. In this exciting inauguration week, we are hopeful that much good will come out of Washington in the coming years. We are inspired by the new hope that is on the horizon, inspired by the new hope that was seen on the stage. Weeks ago, we were wondering if anything good could or would come out of Washington, just like the skeptic, Nathaniel today. Philip says to him, come and see. Over these weeks, we will be speaking to the scriptures alongside the pop original series, Schitt's Creek. We will come and see the good news of that quirky series that swept the Emmy Awards and gave rise to its popularity in the height of the pandemic. Some of you hip and early adopters among the, uh, were among the original cult following heard the buzz years ago about the show and patiently awaited the final sixth season. There's no doubt that the series is over the top and a little hard to get into, but once I got beyond two or three episodes, something happened. The rather annoying ridiculousness of each character became not only hilarious and endearing, but even sad. For many of us, Schitt's Creek has been a perfect source of entertainment. Come and see. Schitt's Creek, like Nazareth, is a town unknown before it's known. And here's some of the story. Bob and Moira Rose live a highly privileged life with their grown children, David and Alexis, in a palace so big, it is no wonder the parents lose track of their kids. Moira, is caught up in her soap opera and B-movie acting career, and Bob, with his massive videotape empire, something like Blockbuster. The opening scene shows us that palace, with ceilings like the Sistine Chapel and a large family portrait that would be among the few items left of their fortune, along with Moira's wig collection, David's skirts, Alexis's platform shoes, once the revenue service is done emptying the place, there will be little left. Their lawyer arrives to tell them that Bob's business partner has ruined them, reminds them of one of the last assets they may have forgotten about, a town that was purchased as a joke for David's birthday. That is Schitt's Creek. Quickly, they will meet the one and only mayor, Roland Schitt, and they will meet Stevie at the front desk of the only motel in town, with a sign outside that boasts of refrigerated air, push-button phones, TVs in rooms, and vacancy. Many of us have stayed at a Schitt's Creek motel, maybe not by choice, Maybe at annual conference, or maybe because the ad for the place looked far nicer 
and cleaner than the vacation spot we checked into. It's disappointing and it's hard to accept and it's humbling for sure. What good can come from that? In the no vacancy narrative of Jesus, we learn about Nazareth, of Galilee, of the Gentiles. After learning that the son of Herod was reigning in Judea, Matthew tells us that Joseph withdrew with Mary and the baby to the district of Galilee, to a town called Nazareth, to fulfill what was actually not spoken in the prophets, but rather by Gabriel. That is, that the child would be called a Nazarene. Sometime later, Luke reports that when they brought Jesus for dedication in the temple, and when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the Jewish law, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And Jesus grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and the grace of God. And in Mark, we learn that no prophet will be successful in their hometown, and sure enough, when Jesus arrives there, the scriptures tell us that he could not perform there. Miracles, that is. Except to lay his hands and heal a few of the sick. The gospel also tells us that he was amazed at the people's disbelief. Why is he turning water into wine at Cana? Why not here? What's up with that? Why isn't Jesus showing off like Springsteen at the Stone Pony or Billy Joel at the Garden in his hometown? We can imagine that they would have hoped to be privileged over the Gentiles of the Galilee. One scholar suggests that we must not miss the racism that was alive and well in first century Palestine. But against those odds, Jesus will preach his first sermon there in his home synagogue. That powerful message of Isaiah 61, of release to the captives, liberty to the oppressed, and recovery of sight to the blind. On hearing this, the people were enraged. They got up, drove him out of town, led him up to the brow of the hill to throw him off the cliff. Powerful sermons will do that. And yet, the phrase Jesus of Nazareth appears some 17 times in the New Testament. So these events are important. But the location is nowhere to be found in the Hebrew Bible. And it's odd, isn't it? That there would be no geographical clue to the birthplace of the one we would call Messiah. But there might be a spiritual one. The words Nazareth and Nazarene are very similar to the Hebrew word Nestor, Netzer, that means branch or sprout. The branch, like the shoot that will come from Jesse's tree. Because there was no sign on the edge of town, welcome to Nazareth, home of the Messiah. The Schitt's Creek sign? is another matter entirely. John may have known these tidbits of oral tradition when he writes about Philip inviting Nathaniel to come and see. And at Philip's invitation, the skeptic, Nathaniel, follows. He comes. Like Schitt's Creek, like worship and the church and the gospel, it's all a little hard to get into. The music is sometimes not our favorite. We really don't understand the scriptures and the preaching, well, eh. But three or four episodes in and something happens. We hear something, the language starts to resonate. The music becomes a relief actually and personalities start to grow on us. What good can come? So much comes out of Schitt's Creek. Humility to be learned, family to be found, love to be discovered, friendships to be formed, an awakening always at hand. And so much comes out of Nazareth and the church. Humility to be learned, 
family to be found, love to be discovered, friendships to be formed, and awakening always at hand. Jesus will call Nathaniel the skeptic, the ideal Israelite, and he'll make an extraordinary promise to him that he, Nathaniel, will see God's angels, and Nathaniel will be with Jesus until the end. Transformation can and will come in times of life's tragedies and loss. And transformation can and will come by way of the invitation from a friend. Humility to be learned, family to be found, love to be discovered, friendships to be formed, and awakening always at hand. Come and see. Amen.